Next one, this one is already a carboxylic acid, so we don't have to turn it into a carboxylic acid. We're just gonna go straight to the acid chloride. Once we get to the acid chloride, not benzaldehyde, once we get to the acid chloride, then let's take a look at our carbons and see if we need to add any carbons to the molecule. And it looks like we do not. So this problem is almost exactly the same as the, the last one. We need to convert that to the aldehyde. And then we can convert that to the acetal. And this really long molecule this guy right here. Step one and then step two with water. All right, we have one more to go. This one actually looks quite a bit trickier than the others, but we're really not gonna be able to use the same type of strategy for this one as we have done with the other ones, but let's, let's actually, let's do a retrosynthesis on this. Let's start with this very interesting acetal and let's retrosynthesize the acetal to figure out what kind of alcohol and carbonyl compound we started with. So when we're doing retrosynthesis of acetal, we want to focus on this carbon that's in the middle of the two oxygens. And remember, we're going to pick one, either one, it doesn't matter which one, pick one oxygen to become the carbonyl group. We're gonna break off the other oxygen and break off the other carbon oxygen bond and let's see what we got. And we've gotta be really careful to not lose carbons because this is a really weird, weird shaped molecule. We've got four carbons on that R group. And remember that we add an H and an OH to that R group to make it an alcohol. And then our other product is this ketone acetone. So our question now becomes, can we convert this guy into either one of these two? How can we convert it into either one of these two? It's really not gonna work to convert this big cyclic ester into a little tiny ketone. That would just be too hard. So let's see if we can find a way to convert that cyclic ester into that diol. Do we have the right number of carbons? Because that diol needs four carbons and we have in the ester one, two, three, four carbons. So that looks good, we could do that. How can we convert an ester to an alcohol? In order to do that, we need to reduce. So can we use LAH, a reducing agent? Let's kind of halfway draw a mechanism and see if that would be reasonable. If we have a hydride attacking the carbonyl carbon, and we're opening up that carbon oxygen double bond. What is it gonna look like? It's gonna start looking like that. And then the negative charge is gonna come back down and remember it's gonna kick off the leaving group, which is that breaking that carbon oxygen bond. So we end up with that. And this, this aldehyde group is gonna to continue to react with hydride So this looks like it's going to be totally reasonable. Once we protonate that, we'll end up with the diol with the right number of carbons.